endocrinologist from Madurai. I am available here in Speedocon to discuss the adjuvant therapies in type 1 diabetes. I think it is something which is uh, very important for us because we all know type 1 diabetes is a chronic metabolic disease which leads to or which is probably related to absolute lack of insulin and insulin has been the cornerstone of therapy for type 1 diabetes. But unfortunately, in spite of various insulin preparations and advancement in administration techniques, we are not able to achieve the desired HbA1c control for those patients in our type 1 diabetes. The reason could be multifold, but one aspect we are trying to look at it is whether any add-on therapy to insulin could help us in achieving the glycemic control. So, when I say add-on therapy, we can try to have a drug which reduces the immune mediated destruction of your pancreas. We can have a drug which could help in replacing your pancreatic cells. But what I would focus is the drugs which could be added to insulin in treatment of type 1 diabetes mellitus. The first drug I would discuss is the metformin and other drugs which should be available would be alpha glucosidase inhibitors, acarbose, miglitol, oglibose. We have DP4 inhibitors, we have GLP-1 analogs, we have AGLT2 inhibitors, but the only drug which has been approved for adjunct therapy in type 1 diabetes along with the insulin is pramlitide, which is available as similin and it works in a way like it suppresses your glucagon, thereby it reduces your postprandial glucose and it also causes hypoglycemia, it causes weight loss. So, that is the only approved indication, but again pramlintide is approved only for those patients with type 1 diabetes more than 18 years of age. Children with type 1 diabetes, it may not be useful. The challenge with pramlintide is one, it is again injectable and patient has to take at least 4 injections per day, which is the dose ranges somewhere between 15 to 19 microgram per day. So, for those patients on type 1 diabetes who are already on basal bolus therapy, they are already on 4 insulins per day and these patients again adding another 3 or 4 uh, injections of similin is going to be a big challenge. And whenever you add these drugs for those patients, the both injections should be given at least 2 inch apart for these patients. Another major limiting side effect or adverse event of this pramlitide is a nausea. Your nausea vomiting is very severe for these patients and that is one of the limiting factors in using this pramlintide. So, though this pramlintide is FDA approved drug, it has been approved by FDA even in 2005, approved drug for the use of uh, add-on or adjuvant therapy in those patients with type 1 diabetes because of its various adverse events, it has not really taken off and people have not used much. Another drug though it could be off label which has been used much is a metformin and metformin added to insulin, your insulin dose we are able to see there is 20 percent reduction in the insulin dose, there is no weight gain and adding metformin there is no hypoglycemia also. So, metformin should be suitable for those patients with type 1 who are obese, whose insulin requirement is at least 1 unit per kilogram per day. and in spite of varying doses of insulin, they are not able to achieve the HbA1c control of less than 8. But whenever you add metformin, remember you, you should be able to reduce the dose of insulin, at least the basal insulin we would be able to reduce. The other drugs which I would like to discuss is your incretin based therapies which is GLP-1 analogs. We have data on exenatide, we have data on liraglutide, but of course these drugs help to reduce your prandial insulin, but they do not try to reduce your basal insulin. In contrary, metformin helps to reduce a basal insulin, it does not help to reduce a prandial insulin. So, GLP-1 analogs again it is a insulin. The reason why GLP analogs were considered is that because the preclinical studies have shown the beta cell preserving effect of these drugs. So, people try to look whether these drugs could help to preserve your beta cell and it reduces your glucagon and it reduces a postprandial glucose and we know postprandial glucose is a independent or postprandial hyperglycemia is a independent risk factor for a cardiovascular disease. So, GLP-1 analog 
it can help in reducing HbO1c, but it can also help to reduce other your, it can have your cardiovascular benefits. DP4 inhibitors, of course, you have various studies in DP4 inhibitors, but to date there is no hardcore evidence to suggest DP4 inhibitors could be used as a adjunctive therapy. The next adjunctive therapy is alpha glucosidase inhibitors and miglitol and these drugs help to reduce your postprandial glucose, but remember all these drugs has be used on top of insulin and these drugs are never a replacement for insulin. And the final drug which I would like to discuss is AGLT2 inhibitors and recently AGLT2 inhibitors has been the major focus in diabetes mellitus because the mechanism of action of AGLT2 inhibitor is totally shifted from pancreas to your kidneys. Till now we have been looking at pancreas as a treatment for diabetes mellitus. We looked at therapies which increase your insulin, which looked at uh, therapies which could be glucose dependent and glucose independent action. First time we are looking at a drug which has a pancreatic independent action. So, AGLT2 inhibitor basically inhibits your glucose reabsorption from the renal tubules. So, it increases your glucose excretion, thereby it reduces the blood sugar. So, in type 1 diabetes, you have insulin which has a different mechanism of action you have AGLT2 inhibitor which again has a different mechanism of action. So, adding these two drugs can help to get a good glycemic control and adding these AGLT2 inhibitor in these patients would help to reduce the insulin dose and it can cause weight loss in those patients. So, it could be considered in those patients who are obese type 1 diabetic where they are requiring high doses of insulin. But the concern with AGLT2 inhibitors, one, because of the renal glycosuria, there could be an increased uh, renal genitourinary infection, which has to be kept in mind. And because of a glycosuria, you can have polyuria in some patients, it can predispose to dehydration. And more importantly, diabetic ketoacidosis is one of the life threatening complications in those patients with type 1 diabetes. And patients on AGLT2 inhibitor, you have DKA which is precipitated even in lower glucose levels. For example, even with blood glucose levels of 200, you can have a patients with DKA. So, any patient with symptoms of diabetic ketoacidosis should be monitored irrespective of a blood glucose. So, these are the various drugs which has been tried, but as of today, apart from pramlinite, none of the drugs is FDA approved. Though ADA gives certain guidance in adding metformin and we find metformin alpha glucosidase inhibitor to be a more useful drug, not much of side effect while using in type 1 diabetic patient on top of insulin. SGLT inhibitor seems to be very promising, but I think we need more data to use these drugs in those patients with type 1 diabetes along with insulin. Thank you. Thank you so much.